Amen. So we're getting into part three of our session and we are going to engage in some prayer. Amen. We're going to pray because prayer is one of the tools that we use to overcome. When in doubt, pray. Amen. When in doubt, pray. So we're going to pray, but I'll exalt us from a portion of scripture. But again, before I do that, we're going to, going to play a song for us. I'll put the lyrics of the song in the chat box because this version doesn't have a, the lyrics. So you follow through the, with the song, listen to the lyrics, understand them. And with the same mindset, we're going to pray after a brief exhortation. Amen. 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 With that confidence that we are just like him, we have exalted him, we have given him his rightful place. We are going to spend some time praying today. Amen. We'll spend some time praying because prayer is how we remain perpetually in the state of a victor. Amen. And see manifestations. We don't want to experience an overcoming you know, situation today and then tomorrow we are back into defeat. Prayer is what will keep us above all the time for the glory of the Lord. Amen. So in this session, we are going to pray. We're going to establish a few truths. We're going to read from the book of Exodus 33 and Exodus 34, 1 to 7, and possibly from the book of Matthew. And the goal, as always, follow the storyline, understand what is happening, then it gives you a better platform for interaction, and especially in this session for prayer. Amen. Amen. Now let's establish a few truths. There are no scriptural references, but these are all scriptural. Prayer is the solution to conquering our strength, overcoming our strength, do we believe? Because prayer is proof that we are dependent, completely dependent on God, right? Mm -hmm. Prayer is proof that we are completely dependent upon the power of God, not ourselves. And we already established that the power of God is in Christ. And Christ is the power of God. And Christ is the wisdom of God, amen. amen. A prayerless life is a powerless life, true or true? A prayerless life is a prideful life. A prayerless life is a disobedient life. The Bible says men ought always to pray and not give up and not faint. Amen. So prayerless life is a disobedient life. A prayerless life is ignorance of the ways of God. True, because in the place of prayer, God reveals to you his heart his heart, his ways, his mindsets, amen. It, at, in the place of prayer is where we glean from God who he really is and become more like him. A prayerless life is a life void of directions. Prayer is a place where we go to, to gain directions. A prayerless life is a prayed life. Something is always haunting you. You always have a pray. Something always haunting you. When you don't pray, you'll be prayed. Amen. A prayerless life is a defeated life. Do we agree? A prayerless life is a confused life. Confused life. Sometimes we are perpetually in, this, in confusion because we do not pray. And even when we pray, we do not wait for a response. We think prayer is a tag along. We just want to tag this and check this box and say, I did, I prayed. <laughs> It's not, that's not how it goes. I prayed. Did you pray today? Yes, I prayed. Really? Okay. So with that established, I'm going to read to us from Exodus 33 from the New King James Version. Let's follow the storyline as always. And then we are going to extract a few things from there. Our goal is not to, um, uh, to glean from every verse of this chapter, but for the purpose of understanding and the purpose of context, I'm going to read the entire chapter, amen. I want us to see a contrast between King David and Moses. These were all leaders to nations, amen. But I want us to see how Moses handled a situation where he had to lead people. The Bible says the command to leave Sinai then the Lord said to Moses, depart and go up from here, you and the people whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt, to the land of which I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying, to your descendants, I will give it. 
So the Lord gives Moses an instruction. Then he says, and I will send my angel before you, and I will drive out the Canaanites and the Amorites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Then he says, go up to a land flowing with milk and honey, for I will not go up in your midst, lest I consume you on the way, for you are a stiff-necked people. Beloved, what do you do when God gives you an instruction, yet he says, I will not go with you? Very challenging. You heard yet he says, I will not go with you, meaning there's something wrong with you. He has permitted you to go, but it's not his perfect will for you. Mm. Talking about the permissive and the perfect will for God. Oh yeah, God told me to go. Under what condition? It's a question we need to answer. Because we just saw from verse one that God told them to go. Now how come God is saying that they should go up to a land flowing with milk and honey? For I will not go up in your midst. Mm. I will not go up in your midst yet. Go. Mm. I will not move. Yeah. I don't know about you. I wouldn't. Yeah. So lest I consume you on the way, for you are a stiff-necked people, stiff-necked people, like most of us are. Then he says, and when the people heard this bad news, they mourned, and no one put on his own ornaments. <laughs> for the Lord said to Moses, say to the children of Israel, you are a stiff-necked people. I could come up into your midst in one moment and consume you. Now, therefore, take off your ornaments that I may know what to do with to you. Because the Lord was, I would say, tired of the people, of their ways. A people who desire the acts of God, but not the ways of God. He calls them a stiff-necked people. So the children of Israel stripped themselves of their ornaments by Mount Horeb. It wouldn't have gotten to this if they only do what they had to do when they had to do it. Now, pay attention to the yellow highlights, the yellow highlighted verses. Moses meets with the Lord. So as a leader, uh -huh. a conflicting message. Uh -huh. We mute our phones, please. He gets a conflicting message and now he's he has to meet with the Lord because he's a leader to these people. So what do I do? The Lord wants me to go. He wants us to go, yet he doesn't want to be there. So any diligent leader will seek the face of the Lord. Amen. We're looking, as we talk about Moses, think about David in context of what we read earlier in the second session. Now it says, Moses took his tent and pitched it outside the camp. Because it was important to Moses that he seeks the face of God. He did it far from the camp and called it the tabernacle of meeting or the tent of meeting. Mm -hmm. Then the Bible says, and it came to pass that everyone who sought the Lord went out to the tabernacle of meeting, which was outside the camp because Moses had established a place to meet with the Lord. Mm -hmm. To resolve this problem, what exactly should we do? So it was whenever Moses went out to the tabernacle that all the people rose and each man stood at his tent door and watched Moses until he had gone into the tabernacle. There are people who like to watch you seek God on their behalf, but they will not join you to seek God. They were waiting to hear from Moses what the Lord will say, because these people, they don't want to do it by themselves. Amen. There are consequences to this kind of actions. Amen. When you see your leader seeking the Lord, join him or her together, seek the Lord, receive a message for the people and for yourself. And it came to pass, verse 9, when Moses entered the tabernacle, that a pillar of cloud descended and stood at the door of the tab tabernacle, and the Lord talked with Moses. As we will eventually see, God, uh, Moses did not say, Lord, may your presence come. May the cloud descend. Because the prayer, Father, I need your presence. I need your presence. Sounds good, but it's not the best prayer to pray. Because when you take time to follow the ways of God, he volunteers his presence. You don't need to say your presence, may your presence, may your presence. Where there is obedience, where the ways of God are honored, the presence of God will come. 
you were here. We witnessed the presence of God when his word was being proclaimed. Mm -hmm. And with individuals, we have witnessed the presence of God. We never prayed, send your presence. It's not a prayer to really pray. You seek his face, divide his word, acknowledge his ways. He volunteers his presence. He shows his face because he likes what he's hearing. So he'll come and show his face. Oh, they're talking about me. So let me show my face as a way of approving. That's how God is. That, and it came to pass when Moses entered the tabernacle that a pillar of cloud descended. You know, say, oh, cloud, please descend. Father, send your cloud from heaven. He didn't pray any of those prayers and stood at the door of the tabernacle and the Lord talked with Moses. He talked with Moses. Moses created the atmosphere conducive for God and God showed up, God volunteered his presence. Mm -hmm. All the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the tabernacle door and all the people rose and worshiped and each man in his tent door. Why could they not do things that would attract the presence of God? They're waiting for their leader only to do it. They had what it took to do it, but they did not because they continue to be stiff-necked. And when a person remains stiff-necked, it's impossible for God to volunteer his presence, his face. We're not talking about the omnipresence of God. We're talking about his manifest presence. When he comes beyond being present everywhere, he comes and say, my daughter, I see you. My son, I see you doing something. I approve of you. Amen. Mm -hmm. So the Lord spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. Mm -hmm. If you want to have the experience of Moses, it's not difficult. Let your ways honor him. Amen. And he will volunteer to speak with you because he's looking for someone to talk with anyway. We're too busy chasing the squirrels that will never catch. Mm -hmm. But the Lord wants us to wait on him so that he can show up and have a conversation, a heartfelt discussion with us as his children, as proof that he's in relationship with us. And he will return to the camp, but his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man did not depart from the tabernacle. Do you now see why Joshua took over from Moses? Mm -hmm. You want to succeed your pastor, you want to be the next in command, but to stay in the presence of God, no way. You argue your way through. Yet, you want to be the next in command to your pastor and to your leader. Joshua paid the price. He stayed in the presence of God. Moses spoke with the Lord face to face. Joshua was a beneficiary. He stayed in that place. Amen. And he was a proper fit after Moses. Proper. You see why? Now, Moses has carried out the routine God has volunteered his presence. The Bible now talks about the promise of God's presence. Mm -hmm. Then Moses said to the Lord, see, you said to me, bring up these people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Let's pause. When King David had to bring the ark, he did not ask God's opinion, who should, be, who should go with him? He recruited 30,000 30, able young men without the opinion of God. But Moses, God has given him a simple instruction. And he says, but you will not let me know whom you will send with me. This is a true leader. A one who doesn't only receive the instructions, but also know whom to carry the, out the instructions with. Amen. Okay. And he says, yet you have said, I know you by name. And you have also found grace in my sight. The same thing with us. We might say, oh, we have been saved by grace. Oh, we are the righteousness of God in Christ. But there is an assignment before you that the Lord has instructed that requires that you go along with other people, but you never go back to him to find out whom should I open this business with? Whom, which school or which instructor should I choose as my instructor for this particular project? Which job? You said I should work, I understand, but where should I find a job? Where is the location where Jehovah Jireh will see to it that I've been obedient? Those who know, know Jehovah Jireh, mm -hmm. amen. Yeah. Now, therefore I pray if I have found grace in your sight, Moses is pleading his case, 
Show me, pay attention now, your way. Show me your way. Because the ways of God are most important, just as the acts of God. God enjoys the process and he enjoys the result. That was what King David did not do. He did not ask God for his ways. He did not observe the ways of God when it comes to keeping the, um, transporting the ark. Amen. He did not seek God's ways. But Moses is so diligent as a leader. He says, show me now your way. Yes, I should take them to this place. But I need to understand your way. How? The ways of God speaks to the how of God. Amen. How should I do it? Yes, you have said this, but how? He says, show me now your way that I may know you. Because the ways of God reveals to you the, who God is, the person of God himself. Amen. His way Amen. Is, an, is, your, is your pursuit to know him. Not just what he does, but him. That is why the Bible tells us that Moses knew the ways of God, but the children of Israel, his acts. What were some of the acts that they, they knew about him? He split the Red Sea. He destroyed them, Pharaoh and his people. Those are the actions. But what does it take for those actions to manifest? They did not know that. And they were not interested to know. That's why God called them a stiff-necked people. But Moses is a leader, an exemplary leader. He says, show me now your way and I may know you, not what you do. Father, may I know you. May I know you. Yes, you are a provider. That is what you do. But who is a provider? Who is a provider? Amen. That I may know you and that I may find grace in your sight and consider that this nation is your people. The stiff necked people, the leader had to still carry them. Do not make it hard for your leaders in Jesus' name. Amen. Because he wouldn't have had a reason to ask God on behalf of these people. He should have spent this time praying for himself. But he brought the stiff necked people before God. Because he, despite how stiff necked they were, he still wanted to lead them correctly. Do not make it hard for your leader. Amen. And he said, this is God speaking. God says, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. My presence, the word there in Hebrew is the word face. My face will go with you and I'll give you rest. Moses asked God about his ways. God volunteered to show him his presence. Moses asked, I would like to know your way. Show me now your way that I may know you. Beloved, every time you seek to know the ways of God, he volunteers his presence. Whether you ask him or not, he volunteers that. God begins by saying, my face, my presence will go with you and I'll give you rest. Then he said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from here. That was Moses speaking. Moses followed through with the conversation. Anyway, I didn't ask you for presence, but now that you have said it, we cannot go anywhere without your presence. That is why I've come to ask you about your ways. But now that you volunteer to talk about your presence, I will follow through with that conversation. If your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from here for sure. For how then will it be known that your people and I have found grace in your sight, except you go with us, right? So we shall be separate, your people and I, from all the people who are upon the face of the earth. So the Lord said to Moses, I'll also do this thing that you have spoken, for you have found grace in my sight, and I know you by name. Then he says, and he said, this is Moses speaking again, please, Lord, show me your glory. Moses did not ask for the presence, but he asked for the glory. Amen. The presence of God could destroy those people because they are stiff necked, but the glory will not destroy them. And I'll explain why. Not everybody, if you are not in good and right standing with God, you cannot appreciate, you will not even benefit from his presence. And if his presence ever comes, it will instead destroy you. 
So Moses understood the condition of his flock. So he asked about knowing the ways of God, and then he skipped over and asked about the glory of God. He did not ask for the presence. But he, Moses, was a beneficiary of the presence of God, of the face of God. Amen. What was still talking, so explain more. Then he said, I will make, now God is responding to the glory. He did not respond to the, 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 the ways based on the ways of God. He, didn't, he instead responded saying that, I'll show you my, my presence. But now when Moses asked for the glory, God now says, I will make my goodness pass before you and I'll proclaim the name of the Lord before you. He's responding that when it comes to glory, no problem, I'll make it available to you because we can all benefit, we all benefit from the glory of God. But the difference between unbelievers and, and believers is that the glory transforms believers, but the unbelievers is of non effect. Amen. So he says, I'll make my goodness pass. Would you say believers and unbelievers alike experience the goodness of God? They do, right? The air we breathe is, an, is a manifestation of the goodness of God. It comes both on the just and the unjust. Amen. Amen. The presence not the same. We are not talking about omnipresence. It says, I will make all my goodness pass before you and I'll proclaim the name of the Lord before you. Amen. Meaning that when the goodness of God passes, when you and I who have believed Christ and understand the glory, when the goodness, when we experience the goodness of God, we can give a name to that goodness to whatever we are experiencing as goodness. When God has been faithful to us, we come and say, God, you are faithful. That's a manifestation of his goodness. Mm -hmm. Faithful, faithfulness of God is the manifestation of the goodness of God. The patience of God is a manifestation of his goodness. This is what the people needed as stiff necked people. They did not need the face which would destroy them. He says, I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Amen. 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 Now he says, but he said, you cannot see my face. Do you see that? I'll, I'll make my goodness pass, my glory, but my face, no way, will destroy you guys. Yes, Amen. Sir. Because he's standing as the people intercession right mm -hmm. he's standing so he's moses could see the face of god like we saw earlier the cloud and everything but now when it comes down to moses standing as the people and pleading their case he said no no you cannot see my face for no man shall see me and live and the Lord said, here is a place by me and you shall stand on the rock. So it shall be while my glory passes by that I'll put you in the cleft of the rock and I'll cover you with my hand while I pass by. Then I'll take my hand and you shall, I'll take away my hand and you shall see my back, but my face, my presence, you shall not. My presence, my face shall not be seen. Like we said, the word presence is the word face mm -hmm. in Hebrew right here. Amen. Now the story continues to Exodus chapter 34. Are we following so far? Mm -hmm. Now I'll read verse 1 to 7 and verse 29. Moses makes new tablets. He was on this journey. And the Lord said to Moses, cut two tablets of stone like the first ones. And I'll write on these tablets the words that were on the first tablets which you broke. Mm -hmm. We know why he broke the first uh, commandments, the first yeah. set of commandments, right? Because the people had built a, a, a golden oh. calf. So be ready in the morning and come up in the morning to Mount Sinai and present yourself to me there on the top of the mountain and no man shall come up with you and let no man be seen throughout all the mountain let neither flocks nor herds feed before that mountain think about it no one should be seen yet Moses should be seen even though he was going to hide him is it not equally dangerous for him it is but he could be there even though his face will be hidden and he'll be protected. Mm -hmm. Just like Moses was able to be there, the others could be there, but their behavior, their ways were not pleasing to God. Mm -hmm. So that presence will literally destroy them mm -hmm. instead of building them up. Mm 
Now, so he cuts two tablets of stone like the first ones. Then Moses rose early in the morning and went up Mount Sinai as the Lord had commanded him. And he took in his hand the two tablets of stone. You see what leaders go through for their people. Amen. He broke, he, truth be told, out of frustration, he broke the first commandments that were written. But because of the evil acts of the people, that was the reason for his action. Amen. So he had to come back again to get the second set. And this is what he had to go through. Now, as the Lord had commanded him, and he took in his hand the two tablets of stone. Now, verse five and six, very important. Remember, God had said, I'll make my goodness pass before you. And I'll proclaim. Do we remember that scripture? Let me read it again, and then we'll come back here. He said, please show me your glory. Then he said, the Lord responded, I will make my goodness pass before you, and I'll proclaim the name of the Lord before you. Amen. So now God is about to make his goodness pass before Moses after he has established all the conditions of who should be present and who should not be present. Now the Lord descended in the cloud. Do we see the cloud again? And stood with him there and proclaimed. Now he's about to show Moses his goodness. Beloved, this is the goodness, the glory of God. Now when you say glory to God, you say it with a different approach beginning today. Amen. Now the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there. And this is what the Lord said, and proclaimed the name of the Lord. Meaning that when you when we talk about the glory of God, we're talking about the proclamations of the name of God, his attributes. Amen. Amen. We proclaim his glory. If I say, if you say, okay, I recognize that you are strong. I can see that you're strong by God's grace. And I respond and say glory to God. I'm saying I appreciate and I acknowledge your goodness that has been manifested through my life through strength or by strength. Amen. It could be that you're financially stable and somebody said, oh, you're financially stable and you say glory to God. You're saying the goodness of God has been manifested in my life through finances. And the Lord passed before him. This is God. Oh. Passing before him and God himself now shows him his goodness by doing this, by proclaiming. You cannot say the glory of God without knowing how to proclaim it. Glory is attached with a proclamation. He said, and the Lord passed before him and proclaimed the God himself proclaiming. This will, I'm sure this will help us when he said lift up your voices and praise the lord it it will help us change our perspective mm -hmm. because if god can proclaim goodness his own goodness how dare we be quiet in his presence mm -hmm. and the lord passed before him and proclaimed this is what the lord himself said as a way of showing moses his glory as a way of attending to moses's uh, request the, the, the lord said the lord this is God speaking, beloved. The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious. This is God speaking. Long-suffering and abounding in goodness and truth. Amen. Keeping mercy. This is God speaking for thousands. Forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. By no means clearing the guilty. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generation. Period. Lord, show me your goodness. Then the Lord says, I will proclaim my goodness to you. The Lord now comes. Lord, show me your glory. Then the Lord says, I will proclaim my goodness. The Lord now comes and proclaims his goodness. How do we glorify God? By proclamation. Proclaiming his goodness. He demonstrated this by himself, not through a prophet. He demonstrated what glory is by himself. Meaning that when, when I say, give glory to God, you start proclaiming. You identify the different areas of your life that God has been good. And you start proclaiming, Lord, you have been merciful and you are merciful. Lord, you have been kind and you are kind. Lord, you are, you are my savior and you have saved me. Continue to save me. Everything you say is the glory 
that you're proclaiming. Amen. Amen. Glory is proclaimed. Amen. Glory is proclaimed. The glory of God needs to be proclaimed. Amen. So when next we come before the presence of God and we need to give glory to God, remember that there is no glory without proclamations. We need to proclaim. We need to proclaim. We need to proclaim. Proclaim the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abounding in goodness and truth. You can add to this list, but this was a good example from the Lord himself to us. What it means to give him glory. Because the question was simple. Lord, show me your glory. So Moses, the Lord responded that this is my glory. Let me proclaim it to you. So when next you want to know about my glory, this is what you need to look out for in your life as a way of appreciating my glory in your life. To God be all the glory. What does that mean? It means that the goodness I see in my life, the prosperity I see in my life, the ability to know the ways of God, those are all um, uh, the manifestations of the glory of God. So I said, all of these, I cast my crown to you. I give this glory mm -hmm. because it is yours anyway. Amen. The glory of God. So the Lord showed him his glory by proclaiming that Moses, when you see these aspects of me demonstrated, know that this is my glory. What do we see in the glory of God? We see the Lord himself, and we see that which he has done. Amen. Amen. He, we see who he is and that which he has done. Amen. You see, he says, the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abounding in goodness. That's what he does in us and through us. Amen. Amen. Then now we go to verse 29. It says, now it was so when Moses came down from Mount Sinai and the two tablets of the testimony were in Moses' hand. When he came down from the mountain, that Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. Amen. Mm -hmm. We're going to speak more about this verse later. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Remember that the Bible tells us that when we behold the glory of God, we are transformed. Mm -hmm. Do we remember that in the book of Corinthians? We'll look at it later. Yeah. When we behold the glory of God, we are transformed. What have you ever understood that sentence to mean? Yeah. Meaning that when we behold the goodness of God in our lives or in the world, that goodness, God's ability to be that good affects our inability to be good to a place where we are being transformed um, into his image. Do we understand? Did we understand online? I need a response. This yeah. is very powerful. We did. Amen. That when you see how God is faithful and you behold the, the faithfulness of God, there's a condition with an unveiled face. Because if your face is veiled, you can behold it all you, all you want and all you can. You will never be transformed. That's why unbelievers are not transformed. Therefore, you and I who know that the veil has been taken off. Amen. When we behold his goodness, his glory, we are being transformed. Do we understand? Yes. Okay. Yeah. We will get that point across now before we move forward. Let's look at this. Let's look at something in 2 Corinthians 3.18 before we go back. And we all, what's the, the condition? Unveiled. With unveiled face, continually seeing as in a mirror the glory the of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Continually, meaning that the condition for you to see glory, goodness of God, and appreciate it, number one, your face needs to be unveiled. Amen. Because the goodness of God manifests to the believer and the unbeliever. How come you, the believer, are being transformed? The unbeliever is not being transformed. Condition, their faces are veiled. Ours is not veiled. Uh -huh. Do we see that? Okay. So, and we all with unveiled face, 
continually seen as in the mirror the glory, the goodness of the Lord, what happens? Are progressively being transformed. Would you say that your transformation is progressive? Yes. yes. All that needs to be transformed within us did not happen in one day and will never happen in one day. True. The extent to which we are able to appreciate the goodness of God mm. is the extent to which we'll be transformed Amen. on condition that our faces Amen. are being unveiled. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. True. Because like I said, the goodness of God, believers, unbelievers know that the Lord is Lord, but what does that mean to them? Mm. Nothing. It means nothing to them because they are veiled. Are progressively being transformed into his image from one degree of glory to even more glory. Because the goal is to be like Christ. The goal mm -hmm. is to be uh, like our Lord. But it does not mm -hmm. happen in one day. It happens mm -hmm. when we progressively behold. Progressively, you will not behold today and tomorrow do not behold and then expect to be transformed. Do you see the secret of transformation? Yes. So, oh, you say I've been practicing this scripture and all of that, and I've not been changed. How are you beholding the glory? Is your face veiled or is it unveiled? Mm -hmm. Do you have the understanding of an unveiled face? When Jesus was on that cross, the veil of the temple tore from top to bottom. Do you believe that? Do you believe that you have access into the most mm -hmm. holy place? The veil has been taken off. Yes. Yes. Which comes from the Lord who is the spirit. The NLT says, so all of us who have had the veil removed, has your veil been removed? It's not rhetoric. Has your veil been removed? Do you know that your veil has been removed? Yes. Okay. So all of us who have had that veil removed can see because if you don't see the goodness of God as the goodness of God, if you don't see the glory of God as the glory of God, yeah. you'll never reflect his glory. Yeah. Never. You'll never be like him. you never grow. To, you'll never progress. Yeah. Remember the, the, the salvation journey, justification, yeah. sanctification, glorification. Amen. Glorification is one of the steps of salvation. But until we are sanctified, until we get into the threshing floor and we are separated, mm. then can we get closer to glorification? Because everything cannot enter the presence. It wouldn't work. Mm. So all of us who have had that veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. And the Lord who is the spirit makes us more and more like him as we are changed into his glorious image. Amen. That is so powerful. There is no way to become more and more like God and into his glorious image when we don't take time to behold his goodness and allow ourselves to be transformed on condition that our faces have been unveiled. This is how we commonly know it. But we all with unveiled face, beholding us in a mirror, the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the spirit of the Lord. Amen. Next time, do not read it too fast. Amen. As you say, what is glory? We, know, we now know what glory is. Amen. So we go back to where we were and continue to establish our points. Now, you and I will agree that Moses beheld the glory of God indeed. He really did. Amen. Now, the Bible says that now it, it was so when Moses came down from Mount Sinai and the two tablets of the testimony were in Moses' hand, when he came down from the mountain, that Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. Because there's something that happens to your appearance when you behold the glory of God. Have you ever met someone and say that you're filled with the glory of God? What do you think that is? What do you think you are saying? I can see the glory all over you. Possible, possibly you're talking about the glow from a physical perspective, from, but from a spiritual perspective, 
you're becoming more and more like Christ. You're becoming more and more like God. I see something different that I cannot even trace you or by your tribe or your nationality. You're more and more like him. So Moses experienced that transformation. And of course, in the old covenants, they said that his skin, the skin of his face shone while he talked with him, but there are more spiritual significances beyond physical uh, transformation. Amen. It goes beyond the, soft, the, 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 the physical appearance. So with this understanding, I'm going to have us pray. Amen. I'll, I'm going to pull up some prayer points. I want and ask us to pray. Now, let's look at the first prayer point right here. Verse 9 to 11, I'll read it again. It says, and it came to pass when Moses entered the tabernacle, that the pillar of cloud descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle. And the Lord talked with Moses. It wasn't the Lord who told Moses to go and pitch a tent. Moses took initiative after he had received an instruction from God and it seemed conflicting. You said we should go, yet you say you will not come with us. What are you talking about? So God, Moses decided to go and find a place to speak with the Lord. And the Lord volunteered his presence and spoke with Moses. And all the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the tabernacle floor and all the people rose and worshiped. Because quite often we like others to go ahead to lead that movement. But when it's the arm of flesh movement, we spearhead. Amen. But now this is the God movement. Everybody is sitting back and waiting for Moses to go ahead. Amen. And all the people rose and worshipped each man in his tent door. So the Lord spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. And he will return to the camp. But his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, did not depart from the tabernacle. Beloved, we are about to pray, amen. So here are the prayer points for these few verses. This evening we have five prayer points. This is prayer point number one. I want us to pray for a desire to develop intimacy and relationship with the Father because it is in developing intimacy and relationship with him that we get to understand his ways, amen. I may know your name, but I may not know your ways. It is when I spend time with you, have a relationship with you, a close-up relationship with you, that I'm able to know your ways. Amen. So we're going to pray for a desire to develop. Do not say I've prayed this prayer before. Mm -hmm. If you had prayed it, <laughs> things will not be where they are right now. Amen. <laughs> so we still need to pray, all of us, myself included. And let's pray for a desire to meet, to encounter the Father directly, not indirectly. The children of Israel wanted to encounter the en encounter God through Moses. The Moses was willing to encounter God by himself. Mm. And let's pray for a desire to know him directly, not indirectly. It should not always be that my pastor said, what has God told you directly, sister and brother? You should be able to say the Holy Spirit spoke to me. And I'm confident of this truth. And you apply that truth that you're confident of, and then you receive results. Mm -hmm. And you'll be happy. For those who have practiced it, you know how sweet it is to the soul. Amen. And to the spirit. So let us pray. These are the three prayer points. I want us to pray these points. And don't just pray them. Pray them with the intention to live up to the standard by the grace of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Moses is an exemplary leader. So we are praying according to his footsteps. Mm -hmm. Amen. So let us lift up our voices mm -hmm. online and here to the Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Mm -hmm. Father, in the name of Jesus, mm -hmm. I do we say thank you mm -hmm. for unveiling to us the life of Moses, mm -hmm. for teaching us. Thank you for the how he so desired to love you and to walk according to your ways, Lord. And he went an extra mile to pitch a tent so that he could seek your face because relationships with you meant everything. He waited upon you, you volunteered your presence and you talked with him while the children of Israel watched from a distance. Mm -hmm. 
Beloved, I hope you are praying on mutes. This is what we're talking about, on mutes and pray. The children of Israel watched from a distance, but Lord, you met with Moses, the one who was willing to go ahead, and you talked with him. So Moses received first-hand information from you. But I pray that we will not fear the sacrifices that are required of us to invest time in your presence. That we will invest the requisite time to receive from you clear and authentic directions so that we can implement them in our own lives, in the lives of the people that you have called us to lead. Because Moses was a great example of leadership. And he did not inquire of the people first, but he inquired of the Lord first. May that be our example, even beginning now, in the name of Jesus. And we would desire to meet with you, to encounter you, like Moses encountered you in the cloud. You volunteered your presence, Lord. He desired to know from you directly what exactly your instructions were. And you revealed them to him. I pray for each and every one of us, Father, that we will desire to spend this time with you so that we will know you, that we will know your ways more than your actions, your ways, your ways, Father, more than our weaknesses, your ways, more than our finances, your ways, more than our businesses, your ways. More than the news broadcasts your ways. Most of us are well versed with the latest news as of now compared to your ways. We cry out to you, Father, that we will know your ways. More than our shortcomings, your ways. May we invest time to know you, your ways, your patterns, for the glory of the Lord. Father, we say thank you. Our hearts are surrendered to you, Lord. We want to know you, Father. You, you, more than what you do, we want to know you. Create a desire in us to know you. To know you. You know how to attract you, your presence. Oh, your presence, Father, Father, help us. Mm -hmm. If we, were, we had known, we would not be where we are today. It's because we do not know, so we have humbled ourselves once again to ask of you. Ah, Father. So you. A desire to know you, a desire to know your ways, a desire to have an encounter with you. We are tired of hearing everyone's encounter with you, and we need an encounter with you. We need an encounter with you, Lord. An encounter, Father. An encounter that will transform us once and for all for the glory of God. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now we continue. Verse 12 says, Then Moses said to the Lord, See, you say to me, bring up these people. True. But you have not let me know whom you sent with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name. And you have also found grace in my sight. Beloved, every prayer point that we are praying, we are establishing that we have overcome and we have conquered Uza. Amen. Amen. So make the relationship and the connection in your mind as we speak. See, you say to me, bring up these people. But you have not let me know whom you will send with me. God neither said, bring the ark, nor did he say, carry, have the people carry it. So the people were wrong on every side. You know, the children of Israel with King David. The analysis once God has said, said something about it, but now they want to know who they should walk with. 
Yet you have said, I know you by name and you have also found grace in my sight. Do not get tired of praying. Let's pray for total surrender. Your declaration or your mantra should be the Lord's agenda, my priority. <laughs> the Lord's agenda, my priority. Could we say that together? The Lord's agenda, my priority. Amen. May we mean it. Total surrender, even as leaders. Amen. If you're a leader, you consider yourself a leader of any shape or form, a leader of a household, a father in a household. This is applicable to all of us. Amen. Total surrender. The Bible says we are living sacrifices. Oh, anyway, we ought to be because not everyone is. Amen. That's who we ought to be, living sacrifices. Moses knew what to do. To do. However, he wanted the father to show him whom to work with. Because that person is beautiful doesn't mean you must work with them. Because they have the finances doesn't mean you should work with them. Because they are intelligent doesn't mean they'll be a plus to your, to your organization. Doesn't matter. There are people who do not look like anything, but in them are treasures. I don't know who belongs to that category, but I declare that I belong to that category. That I'm filled with treasures. Filled with treasures and mysteries that I'm a carrier of the mysteries of God. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Total surrender, even as a leader, that the Lord will lead us to the right people at the right time for his glory. Amen. Amen. That the goodness of God will be manifested through those people when he leads us there. But when he doesn't lead us, no glory will manifest. Amen. Instead of inquiring from the people first who will go with him, Moses inquired from the Lord first. But what did King David do? He inquired from the people, the able, strong men, the ones who looked like it in their thousands. But one with God is a majority. And God says, yes, let the world say no. Stand with God and see him fight your battle for you. Moses does not depend on his strength and his ability. He did not depend on his eyesight. You know, he had good eyesight, right? He said he was, when he was 120 years old, his eyesight was not dimmed, nor his natural force abated. So his eyes were good. So he could see good things and know what is good. But he refused to depend even on his ability to see good and call it good. He depended on the strength and the ability of God. Now that you understand, lift up your situation to the Lord. Amen. That we pray for total surrender. Let's not be quiet. If you can unmute, unmute. There is a grace available for you to partake of. Otherwise, you live here as the same person. But this is this is not the reason why we are gathered. Another event, no. I surrender everything. Father, we totally surrender to you in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Totally surrender. We present our bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable unto you. For this is our reasonable act of service, of worship unto you. Total surrender, Daddy. Total surrender. Total surrender to your will and to your ways in the name of Jesus. That your agenda is our priority in the name of Jesus. That even when you call us to leadership positions of any kind, Father, we will learn to seek your peace. We will learn to seek your ways to understand whom we should walk with and when we should walk with that person. We will not depend on our ability to make the best choices, to see best and make decisions based on our eyesight, to see and or to think logically and make decisions out of our logical mindset or out of our philosophical mindset or out of the decisions of the media, Lord. So everything comes from you. Everything is possible. We will come back to you, Father. We will seek you first. We will seek you first, Father. We will seek you first and get your opinion on things before the opinion of the world in the name of Jesus. 
We cannot do this by ourselves. So Spirit of God, we ask for your help. If we had arrived, then we will not be praying these prayer points, but we need help today. We receive help not to depend on the arm of flesh. Quite often we say arm of flesh will fail, but do you realize that you are arm of flesh? You can fail you. We always think of arm of flesh as other people failing us, but you also, you are an arm of flesh and you fail yourself. May the Lord deliver us from ourselves in the name of Jesus. May we be delivered from ourselves. Oh, may we be delivered from self, from efforts. I can do, I can do, I can do. No, you can't without the help of God. In the name of Jesus. Are we praying together? Amen? Amen. Now, verse 13 says this, the promise of God's presence. Now, therefore, I pray, if you have found grace in if I have found grace in your sight, show me now your way that I may know you. This is a prayer point that we ought to be praying daily. Father, show me your way. How, well, after we have prayed that point, we go back to his word. That's how you learn about the ways of God. Amen. Mm-hmm. Don't just pray the prayer and go. He has made provisions for how we should know his way. Beloved, if you come back next year to this retreat and you're still the same, then we don't know what we will certainly do with you because all the tools have been made available to you. Mm-hmm. you still go back and struggle and cannot conquer this Uza we've been talking about. Then we don't know. We've done our best. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Now, therefore, I pray if I have found grace in your sight, show me now your way that I may know you and that i may find grace in your sight and consider that this nation is your people look at what the word of god has to say amen in psalm 119 verse 19 it speaks of an acknowledgement that you and i need to acknowledge daily like the breath you breathe never Mm -hmm. forget this i am a stranger in the earth if you think you have come to remain i have good news for you you will not remain (laughs) It's good news. You wouldn't. We'll make sure that you leave in, at the right time. You must leave. I'm a stranger. We'll pray you out. We'll pray you out, right? Yes. I'm a stranger in the earth. Say it. In fact, say, say I am a stranger. Let me just an- announce this. I am a stranger in the earth, just in case your mind has convinced you that this is it. Beloved, it's not it. This is not it. We bring you good news from the throne of God. You are a stranger Mm -hmm. in this earth. You will not be here forever. So do not consider this a dress rehearsal either. Amen. You are a stranger. I am a stranger in the earth. Do not hide your commands from me. Amen. In other words, no hide your ways from me. I'm just passing, but while I am here, please, may I know your ways. Yes. I cannot do it by myself. Amen. I cannot do it by myself. I'm a stranger. If you travel to, let's say, Australia, you'll certainly be a foreigner there, a stranger there. Mm-hmm. Would you say you will know, for someone who has never been there, would you say you know the language? Do you know no. where the grocery stores are? Do you know the nuances of the people? Do you know any? Do you know what side of the road they're driving and all of those, without doing your due diligence of research? Mm-mm. You cannot. So, so I don't know. <laughs> Human beings are very courageous, you know, in the wrong things. A fish will never attempt to live out of water. We've heard that all the time. Because they know that water is their natural habitat. Mm-hmm. So they want to stay there. When you catch a fish, they, they only want to go back to the water. They were so courageous in the wrong things that we, we, want, we feel comfortable living out of God's presence. Mm-hmm. And then we want to make it. It's not possible, beloved. Mm-hmm. We were created in the presence and for the presence. Yep. Amen. Amen. That is where we belong. The just shall live by faith. Mm. That's where we ought to be. Yet we resist what is rightfully us. Even animals sometimes behave better. They know their natural habitat and they want to stay there. 
that we are strangers. So our prayer is that, Lord, do not hide your commands from us. Psalm 103 verse 7 says, he made known. This is where this statement comes from now. Mm. Everything we saw in Exodus 33 and 34. Mm. He made known his ways to Moses, but his acts to the children of Israel. Mm. Because Moses continually prayed for the ways of God to be revealed to him. But the children of Israel wanted the acts. Okay, Moses has gone to find out the ways. Now the presence have been volunteered. Now they stand at their tents and they are benefiting. They want to see the action. They don't want to pay the price to, make the, to, to know the ways. He made known his ways to Moses. Can we agree that he did? Yeah. And yeah. his acts to the children of Israel. Then Psalm 86 verse, verse 11 says, Teach me your way. I'm giving us prayer points, verses to quote so that the angels can run with. Teach me your way, O oh Lord. I will, I will walk in your truth. Mm -hmm. Until the Lord teaches us, we cannot walk in the truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. Amen. More scriptures. It says <laughs> Psalm 25, 4 to 5. Show me your ways, O oh Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. On yeah. you I will wait all the day. Show me your ways, O oh Lord. Show me your ways, the prayer point. John 14, 26. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things beloved all things meaning including the ways of god all things including the ways of god all means all and bring to your remembrance all things that i, I said to you amen. amen so what are we praying about the same prayer point that moses prayed mm -hmm. lord show me now not tomorrow beloved now your way that I may know you. When you seek to know the ways of God, he will volunteer his presence. Let us pray. Father, we come before you, even like your servant Moses did. And he said, Lord, show me now your way. Moses said, if I have found grace in your sight, we live in a dispensation of grace. So the grace is available to us. So we pray and we say, Lord, show us now your way that we may know you. That is our humble plea before you today in the name of Jesus. Because your grace has been made available to us, we recognize, Father, that we are strangers upon this earth. Therefore, we pray and ask that may you not hide your commands. May you not hide your ways from us in the name of Jesus. For we acknowledge that you made known your ways to, the, to, to, to Moses, and you made known your acts to the children of Israel. May it not be said of us like it was said of the children of Israel, but may it be said of us like it was said of Moses, that in our time you made known your ways, you made known your patterns, you made known your ways to us, Lord. We say thank you, Father, for teaching us your ways, teaching us, oh Lord, your ways so that we can walk in the truth of your word in the name of Jesus. That we say thank you. Thank you for teaching us. Thank you for showing us your ways and for teaching us in your paths, in the name of Jesus. May you lead us into all truth and teach us, Father, your ways, void of your ways. Yes, Lord. We find ourselves practicing error, and that is not our portion. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, our helper, who is helping us even now by leading us into all truth, including the truth about who you are to us. That we bless you. Bless you. Your ways, oh God, your ways, your ways, 
to not get tired of praying this prayer, to spare your life. It will spare the life of your brethren. It will spare the life of your family members. Do not get tired of praying this prayer points. We are getting into the sixth month. Watch and see how things unfold. But exempt yourself. Exempt yourself, beloved. Exempt yourself from the arm of flesh by knowing the ways of God diligently in the name of Jesus. Amen. The ways of God. The Amen. ways of God. Are we praying? Yes. Amen. Prayer yes. point number Amen. four. Amen. The Bible says in verse 14 to 15, and he said, my presence will go with you and I'll give you rest. Remember, he asked about the ways and God volunteered that his presence will go with them and I'll mm. give you rest. Then he said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from here. Of course, why would you want to go without the presence of God? For Moses, it was a given, but for the children of Israel, it wasn't a given. Amen. Amen. So what are we saying here? If we want to enjoy the presence of God, if you want God to always show his face in your business with a sign, with a thumb of approval, the starting point is to desire to know the ways of God. Mm -hmm. You stop praying prayers like, Father, your presence, I need your presence. Mm -hmm. He's not keeping his presence away from you. He wants, you know, he wants to be where you are. But because we are stiff necked before we were stiff neck, now we are not because we are praying. Amen. <laughs> we keep him away. But now I would like to get calls testifying that because I sought the ways of God, he volunteered his presence. Amen. Amen. If you want to enjoy the presence of God, the starting point is to desire to know the ways of God. Then the presence will find a resting place. God cannot rest in the midst of confusion and chaos and unforgiveness and backbiting and backsliding and backstabbing and all the backs you can think about. Amen. Amen. You cannot expect, that's why you keep praying prayers like show me your presence, show me your presence. It doesn't work that way. He will not show. You cannot force him to do it anyway. He wouldn't. Amen. So do your part. He will do his part. When we come into divine alignment, everything takes its place. You don't, there are some prayer points that you eliminate by virtue of divine alignment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No need, Lord, your presence. I need your presence. Does he not want to volunteer his presence? He wants to. Mm -hmm. Then the presence will find a resting place. Moses did not pray for the presence. God volunteered his presence. We've talked about that over and over. Then now Moses said, please show me your glory. Then he said, I'll make my goodness, all, all, all my goodness pass before you. And I'll proclaim the name of the Lord before you. God was speaking as if he was going to proclaim the name of another God. But he was talking about yeah. himself. He said, I'll make all my goodness pass before you. And I'll proclaim the name of the Lord before you. Which Lord? He's the Lord. Amen. 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 So I'll make all my goodness pass before you and I'll proclaim the name of the Lord before you. I'll be gracious to whom I'll be gracious mm -hmm. and I'll have compassion on whom I'll have compassion. But he said, you cannot see my face for no one shall see me and leave. That's the Lord speaking to Moses. And the Lord said, here is a place by me and you shall stand on the rock. So it shall be while my glory my glory passes by. Now I'll put you in the cleft of the rock and I'll cover you with my hand while I pass by. Then I'll take away my hand and you shall see my back. But my face shall not be seen. Amen. My yes. face shall not be seen. Now look at this. Now the Lord descended in the cloud. We had read this before, but because one will pray. I'm reading it again. Now the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed before him and proclaimed. This is what I want you to proclaim. And I want you to add to this list because we're going to proclaim the goodness of God. We're going to proclaim the glory of God. Do not run short of words. Do not fall asleep either. 
Amen. Amen. Proclaim, Amen. just as the Lord proclaimed, I want you to add to this list. I want to proclaim that the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abounding in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generation. This is the goodness of God because his mercy is for thousands. Amen. For thousands. But the punishments, um, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generation. His, that punishment ends somewhere, third and fourth generation. May his mercy continues after those generations. Amen. Amen. He will surely punish sin. He will, but his mercy far surpasses his punishment. Amen. Amen. I don't know what the glory of God or how the glory of God has manifested in your own life. Only you can pray this prayer perfectly for yourself. So I want you to proclaim the glory of God as you see fit and manifest in your own life in the name of Jesus. Let us, let's proclaim. God proclaimed his glory. I want you to proclaim his glory in your life. Father, we declare this day that you are the Lord, the Lord God almighty. Oh, you are magnificent, Father. You have been faithful throughout the ages. That's who you are, and that's who you have been. You are El Rakum, God of mercy and God of compassion. You are El Shaddai, God of all sufficiency. You are Jehovah Shalom, the God of peace. You are Yahweh Yare, the God that sees to it. Father, we say thank you because you're El Roi, the God that sees me. Father, I bless you for you are good and there is no one compared to you i bless you this day i ascribe every glory i cast every crown to you lord because you have been true to me and you have kept your promises to me and to my generation you have never failed me in all of this, I see the manifestations of your glory. And I say, thank you. You have been gracious. You have exercised your long suffering towards me and my generation. I say, thank you because you are a God who abounds in goodness, who abounds in truth, who keeps your mercy for thousands of generations, who forgives iniquity, transgressions, and sins. That he will say, thank you. Oh, I recognize you this day as my God, you are Adonai to me. Oh, Razoto, Kendelika Sota, Bandelia Sota, Rekhandelia Koyo Toriba City, are the God who forgives all my sins. And I say thank you. The one who gives me hope again. The one who corrects me when I go wrong. The one who fights my battles. You are my defender. You are my strength. Razoto, Kendeliasa. Father, I recognize you. I recognize your glory. I recognize your goodness. In my life, you have exercised your patience towards me. While I was in the world, you saw it fit to send Jesus Christ to die for me or even before I was born. And while in the world, you sent people to minister to me. And today I stand boldly to proclaim your goodness in the land of the living. And I said, thank you. So you be all glory. I ascribe every glory to you. I recognize your goodness and I give it back to you. I say thank you for you are God all by yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Your protection never fails. My going out and my coming in is blessed because of your goodness. Because of your goodness. God. Because of your kindness, because of your love, your goodness, Lord, your goodness, Lord, 
Your goodness, Lord. You've made all your goodness known to me. You've shown me all your goodness. You are gracious. Father, you we are say thank you. Father, you are forgiven. We say thank you, Lord. Beloved, don't get tired of praying. Lift up your voices. I need to hear you pray. I need to hear you speak. I need to hear you proclaim the goodness of God. God proclaims his goodness. We dare not stay quiet in his presence. Father, we say thank you. Father, we say thank you. Thank you for ever. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, Father. Every your goodness. Your goodness. In my health, your goodness. In my mind, your goodness. All I see is your goodness. Thank you, oh Lord. In the air I breathe, all I can see is your goodness. With all my senses functioning. All I see is your goodness. With the ability to share your word, all I see is your goodness. Oh, the your Almighty. goodness, Lord. The, the strength I bestow, Lord, all I see is your goodness. Your Father. goodness, Lord. Your it's glory. Brothers and sisters, thank you. Mm. Thank you. Your thank goodness. You. Your goodness. Your glory. Thank you, great Your Lord. glory. Thank you, great Your Lord. glory, Lord. Oh, Lord. Your glory. I cast every crown. I cast you, every Lord. crown. Thank you, Your Lord. goodness, Lord. Your goodness. Your goodness. Your goodness, Lord. Your goodness for the grace to surrender all and be in your vineyard. All I see is your goodness. Your goodness, Father. I worship you, O Lord. Your goodness, Lord. Your goodness. Your glory. Your glory, Father. Your glory. Masota rekendelia kosata. Hmm. Die on the cross and wash my sins, Father. Thank you. Thank you for the joy of thy salvation. Thank you. Thank you for who you are. In the never, name of Jesus. The God will never fail. Thank you for your almost day. Thank you, Lord, for provision. This is a prayer point that we should always pray, proclaiming the goodness, the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Proclaiming Amen. the glory. Never Amen. cease. Even Amen. if we are stopping here, it doesn't mean that you stop proclaiming the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Now that you understand what the glory is, yeah. never cease to behold the glory. Because yeah. until you behold it and it becomes your reality, then can you proclaim it effortlessly. Yeah. I cannot convince you that God is good until you experience his goodness for yourself. Do we agree? Yeah. One of the reasons why we come to his presence, we lack words, is because you've never taken time to really behold anything. So you don't even know what God is doing or what he's not doing. Mm -hmm. So to speak about it now is really difficult because what then do you say and not say? Mm -hmm. I cannot <laughs> convince you that God is faithful. You need to have experienced it. You need to have beheld his faithfulness to freely say, Father, you're faithful. Yes. What does it take to say, Father, you're faithful? To prove that some people's faces are veiled, God has been faithful to you up to this point. But because you don't realize it, because of a veiled face, you cannot even say, Father, thank you for being faithful to provide air that I breathe. Our faces are so veiled that we cannot even recognize that the air that we breathe is from God. 
May the Lord help us. May we not sleep in the presence of God in Jesus' name. Amen. I like sleeping. Second <laughs> Corinthians 3:18. <laughs> Second Corinthians 3:18. I'm going to read it like I'd read earlier and to emphasize. Repetition is God's strategy. It's part of the ways of God. Don't get offended when people repeat stuff. It's God's ways. Every time you wake up to a morning and to a night, repetition. Don't you get tired of seeing a morning, afternoon, evening, every day of your life? Repetition is part of kingdom strategy and kingdom agenda. Amen. Amen. So 2 Corinthians 3.18, it says, And we all with unveiled face, continually seeing as in a mirror the glory of the lord let's pause if you do not continually behold the, the glory of god you'll forget so if somebody asks you that what has god done for you today you cannot even spontaneously say that he has kept me alive you start thinking oh what what has he done the fact that you can talk he has done something do you do you not i mean the first 20 minutes you should not be thinking you just just pour it out he has blessed me he has provided he has kept me alive. just keep saying it then you get to the first hour then you start thinking now okay now that i've listed the ones that come effortlessly what else has he done you cannot start give start giving thoughts to what he has done that you have not perceived that you have not beheld because until you behold it then does it come effortlessly May we not sleep in the house of God. <laughs> the Amplified Classic says, and we all with unveiled face, continually seen as in a mirror. The key here is unveiled, unveiled. But I take off the veil. The first year of this retreat, two years ago, the subject matter was unveiled because it's necessary for us to be unveiled. A veil will keep you stagnant. A veil will cause you never to recognize and see the glory of God. The veil in the temple has been torn. However, there are other things that we can do around us to take out the veils. We need to let Lord depart because some lots in our lives are preventing us from seeing the glory of God. I hope you know that the, the Hebrew meaning of the word lot is veil. So we need the lots to go. We need the unveiling even in the physical realm, just as we need it in the spiritual. As you trust God and believe God to understand the unveiling spiritually, may you trust him to cause the lots we all know who Lot is, Abraham's nephew, because the Lot to depart. Lot means veil. We need an unveiling, even with our, our companionships. Amen. And we all with unveiled face, continually seeing as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are progressively being transformed, progressively being transformed. Why? Because we are continually seeing continually beholding his goodness in our lives and in the lives of people who have been transformed. In other words, an unbeliever will not experience transformation, even though the glory, the goodness of God has been dispensed to them. All they see are negative things because the veil is still there. Being transformed into his image from one degree of glory to even more glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the spirit. NLT says, so all of us who have had that veil removed, may we purposefully go back home today and ask the Lord in our lives to take their rightful place. Pray them out if you must. Amen. We don't need any more veils. And the Lord, who is the spirit, <laughs> do not pray your husband and wife out, please. I need to bring balance. <laughs> For he said that they told us at the retreat that we need to pray out the Lord. And you, my husband and wife, you are the Lord. So I'll pray you out. Please don't do that. Maybe you want to see uh, Mr. Kwasi for counseling, marriage counseling <laughs> instead. And... <laughs> and the Lord, who is the spirit, makes us more and more like him. Can you believe that God wants, to, wants us to be more and more like him? As we are changed into his glorious image, I desire to be transformed at divine speed, not at my speed. 
divine speed, at the pace that he desires for me to be transformed. I don't, win, I don't want to sabotage my progress. May that be your prayer in the name of Jesus. But we all with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, from faith to faith, and from grace to grace, just as by the spirit of the Lord. Amen. Now here, Oh, let's pray that prayer point actually, if I talk about this. Let's pray. Pray, ask the Lord to help you to never cease to behold his glory, number one. Pray and ask him to help you pray out the Lord in your life or counsel them out of your life or advise them out of your life. However, he, whatever the strategy he wants to unveil to you, pray, just pray. The goal is never to cease to behold his glory. And if a person stands as a hindrance to you beholding the glory, may that person pack and go in the spirit and in the physical. May lots go. May the veil depart so that I can be unveiled. Let us pray. Razot handeli kore bosete likhandala kod elias data. Father, I do not ever want to cease to behold your glory in the name of Jesus. I never want to be in position where I cannot be hold your glory and I can and I'll have to think about your goodness before proclaiming it I never want to be in that position that is my prayer and that is the prayer of every family represented online here in the name of Jesus when it comes to the physical veils the lots in our lives we receive strategies oh God tonight and today to speak to them, to counsel them, to advise them so they can get out of our lives. Because it was only after Lot left Abraham that Abraham was able to see beyond where he was. So, Father, I choose not to be veiled by the lots of my life and by any spiritual veil. Because the veil of the temple has been torn from top to bottom and i am a beneficiary in the name of jesus thank you we realize that prayer is very challenging but this is how you conquer uza you don't conquer uza by just talking you pray it out pray him out you pray that spirit out in the name of jesus Prayer is hard work, but it's good work and it's godly work. Father, we thank you. We thank you. To you be all glory. A prayerless life is a prayed life. I refuse to be a prey and I refuse to be prayed. Because when you do not pray, you pray others and others will pray you, as in P R E Y. Amen. Now the secret of carrying and reflecting the glory. Now it was so when Moses came down from Mount Sinai and the two tablets of the testimony were in Moses' hand. When he came down from the mountain that Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. Have you ever been in a situation whereby you, you, you continue to behold the word of God concerning a specific aspect of, let's say that you're, you're, you tell lies uncontrollably, then you begin to behold the scripture that says that you shouldn't lie and every scripture in those lines. Then suddenly you realize that you had stopped, you had stopped lying. You did not just stop lying. Has it ever occurred to you that suddenly you've stopped doing some things that you used to do and you did not struggle? That's a secret when you behold the glory. You will not know when the change comes, where it will come. Amen. That's Amen. how it is. Amen. Amen. So we need to behold his glory. His glory is his, also his word, his goodness to us. That will cause us not to fall on the way. Moses had been in the presence, had experienced his presence to a place where he did not know that the skin of his face shone while he talked with them, with him. When you meet people, they'll say there's something different about you. And you, you do not even know when that difference took place. 
but you know that there is something different. The glory made the difference. Amen. The glory made the difference. Now, what are we saying? Moses lost sight of himself. Why? Because the Bible says that he did not know that the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. What is the spiritual symbolism here? When a person continually beholds the glory of God, self is canceled. Self is canceled. Self is canceled. canceled. When you are very self-conscious as a child of God, I have a recipe for you. Go and behold the glory. Then you stop being too self-conscious. Amen. Standing before you is the most self-conscious person you can ever meet. Mm. But the only way I was able to conquer that Uzai in my life was to continually behold the glory of God. Then self got canceled. The Mildred of today is not the Mildred of 10 years ago. Mm. What made the difference? Beholding the glory. Amen. Amen. How you look, how you don't look, what you wear, what you don't wear, what you eat, what you don't eat, what you say and what you don't say. Self is can canceled. Souls are perishing and you care about what you wear to stand in front of people. Souls are perishing. You care about how your hair looks. Souls are perishing. You care about your vocab. May God help us in Jesus' name. May we behold the glory long enough so that self is canceled in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. We've had Amen. enough. I cannot go here because my shoe has a hole. So oh, hard. Lord. Mm. Your shoe having a hole and a soul going to hell, which is most important. May the Lord help us. May he deliver help us. Him from self, that will behold the glory to a place where self is canceled. Self-effort is canceled hmm. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Self-power is canceled. Self-sufficiency. I have enough for me and my household. What about the kingdom of God? Lord, help me to focus on you. Preach the word. Oh, um, excuse. Pray. Excuse. Clap your hands. Okay, don't preach. Excuse. Don't pray. Clap your hands. Excuse. What do we want for crying out loud? Oh, if I jump, I came with my friend. Don't think I'm crazy. So what? <laughs> May God help us, Lord. Beloved, pray. Father, deliver us from self. Help us, Lord, deliver us from self. May we behold your glory, Father. May we behold your glory to a place where self is cancelled in the name of Jesus. For in ourselves, we can do nothing. We can save nothing. We can become nothing, Lord. Oh, Father, help us. Your friend invites you to come and bless their ceremony. You cannot go because you don't have an outfit. May the Lord help us. In Jesus' name, may he help us. That could be your opportunity to lead a soul to Christ and your consent how your dress looks like. May the Lord deliver us. May the Lord deliver us that we will not miss opportunity because self stood in the way, mm-hmm. conquering Uza once and for all. In the name of Jesus, we are conquering our strength once and for all. In the name of Jesus. Hmm. May the Lord help us. We cared about the kingdom and we care about how we look and what we do with ourselves and with our arm of flesh. The results will be different. They will not be looking for workers in the vineyard of God. May the Lord help us. 
when a person continually beholds the glory of God, self is cancelled. If you, if you are a very self-conscious person, male or female, I reveal to you, I unveil to you a secret. Behold the glory of God in the name of Jesus. Behold the glory of God. So that how you look will not matter. How best can you look if you're a lame person, you're lame anyway, unless you trust God for your legs. But while the miracle is in, is in progress, go and preach the word. We lose sight of self when the glory is present. Amen. We lose sight of self when the glory is present. Yeah. Lose sight of self when the glory, because all you see is the goodness of God. Mm -hmm. All you see is I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You mm -hmm. have beheld that scripture until it has become your reality. Even yeah. though the world thinks you're the most ugly person, but in your eyes and the eyes of God, you're fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen. 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 May the Lord help us. We're almost done. Moses lost sight of himself. Now we gain sight of self when the glory is absent. Do we agree? Yeah. Yes. We become super self-conscious and we become naked, meaning we, we are void. Think about the example of Adam and Eve when they were naked. Amen. Was it they were they, they were without clothes long ago? So how come suddenly they now know that they are without clothes? Mm. The glory had departed. They had stopped focusing, beholding the glory. Mm. Now they're focusing on on themselves. Oh, I'm naked. Oh, I'm not naked. We become naked of God's power, naked of faithfulness. We're disrobed because the glory of God is like a robe. And we continually behold it like a hope that is placed upon us. Amen. Amen. I want to pray and thank the Lord, even as we conclude on these prayer points. And if you are led online and in-house, to so just lift up your voice and pray by all means that the floor is open. Thank you for your word this afternoon. Yes, Lord. But thank you, oh Lord, for you have been with us every step of the way. Yes, Father. But thank you for your mighty word also. Father, you have been with us and you have shown us your way. Yes. Lord, we continue to pray for the grace to follow the ways that you have shown us this afternoon, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Yes you because you are the God that answered prayers. When your children call, you answer, oh God. Father, we thank you for all the good things you have done in our lives. Father, we cannot list them all. There are so many. Father, you are a gracious God. We thank you, King of glory. We thank you, ancients of days. We thank you, Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Adonai. Jehovah El Shaddai. Lord, we glorify your name. We worship you. Father, I worship you. I thank you for being there in my life. Mm -hmm. You for being with me every step of the way. Father, I thank you for being even in time of souls. In time mm -hmm. of Father, you have been there. You have never departed for me, oh Lord. Mm. I am standing here to stay to praise and to worship you. In the name of Jesus. I thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that administers to us every day. Thank you for that voice that we hear. Father, we pray, oh God, that as we hear, may we not take it for granted. As we have hear your words this afternoon, Lord, May we not take it for granted in the name of Jesus. Father, King of glory, be with us. As we see, you have shown us your way already. You have shown us your way. We have seen your way. What is expected from us as your children? Yes, Father, Lord. That will never depart from it, O oh God. May we never depart from your side, O oh Father. Lord, we receive the strength 
We receive, O oh Lord God, the glory that you have bestowed upon us this afternoon. We pray, O oh God, that we'll continue, Father, to sail in your boat and to win many more souls to you, O oh God. Father, help us to help our sisters that as they having veils in their faces, O oh God. Help us to help our family, our brothers, that are still having veils on their faces, O oh God, that together, Lord, we shall all glorify and magnify your name at the end of time. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your God will never face. Thank you, O oh God, for being with us. Thank you for your presence. Thank you, King of glory. Thank you, ancients of days. In the name of Jesus. In my prayer. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Florence. Amen. Amen. Please, you can, anybody else can lift up their voices and just pray to God, just however you're led to pray. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. The Candelia Coyot Handelia Sutu. Mandibo Sut Handelia Coyot. Thank you. Bos Handelia Corobo City. Condelia Coyot Sandipasu. I pray the Father to have each one of us that we let go of Uza, that we conquer what the Lord wants us to do by the Spirit of the Lord, that we know the ways of God, that we let go of self, that self will disappear, self will disappear, in the name that the Spirit of God will increase in us and self will be disappearing, that our spirit will decrease and will vanish completely, that when we answer the call, that we go forward in the kingdom. We go wherever we find ourselves. The Lord said to spread the gospel, to the good news to every soul, every human race on planet Earth need to be saved. So when we are out in the vineyard to pray, to seek God's face, we need to let go of self. Self has to disappear so that they you have their souls for the kingdom of God, for the advancement of the kingdom. Wherever we find ourselves in our workplace, in our home, in our school, in our surrounding, yes. in our community, people should know that there's something peculiar, something different about these people. And they will ask about Jesus. Jesus is the key. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. Whatever we find ourselves, we need to bring the gospel of truth mm -hmm. and let self go. Self need to disappear and vanish. In Jesus' name, I have prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Didi. Thank you for praying. Amen. Thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. Thank you for everything that you have unveiled our eyes about today and just helped us to understand. Thank you for challenging a lot of us to live righteously, to go deeper and to um, push past these sins, um, presumptuous sins. Thank you for uh, Mama Mildred and the team for preparation of this beautiful retreat, God. We pray that you continue to pour into them and that you would continue to increase them in their learning and their faithfulness and whatever wherever it is you're sending them, that you would be Jehovah's prayer. We thank you, Lord, for each and every one of us. We pray that we will be a blessing to the people out there. And I pray that this word will grow in us richly, that it will transform many, not just us, but many, many will be transformed. We thank you, Lord, for this wonderful time <laughs> sitting and uh, just meditating upon your word and just pushing through to get the real meaning and the understanding of it. I just pray that this will begin um, a ripple effect of so many things about our time, our quiet time, our time alone with you. 
will be heavily affected by what we have learned here. Mm -hmm. And that Lord, I thank you because we, we have you have conquered Uza. Mm -hmm. We are conquering daily, Lord. Mm -hmm. Those habits, those things that are standing in the way of um, us having perfect fellowship with you. We just pray that you would continue to help us. May we continue to think about the things we've learned here today. Let those words echo in our minds until the coming of Christ. We thank you. We love you. And we dedicate the rest of this day on table hands. Jesus, pray. Amen. 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 We have come to the end of the Woman of Faith retreat. Covering wow. Uza 2022. All glory. God be the glory. God be the glory. Amen. I want to say thank you to everyone who participated online. Your entire day was consumed by this, but the Lord is your Lord in Jesus' name. And thank you to the Amen. 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 Thank you, Mama. Amen. God continue to Amen. 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 Thank God. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank God. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, family. I'm so grateful. So grateful. So grateful. I'm grateful. So grateful. I'm grateful too. We are grateful. Amen. Amen. We are grateful. Amen. I'll see you all next year, 2023. I don't know what the theme is. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Amen.